thank you for joining me. I'm going to talk about the costs of expat living in Mexico, about living U.S. citizens living abroad in Mexico. I'm Bill Holiday. I'm with AIO Financial. We have a couple other associated channels, including expat planners. The goal is to just look at the costs of living in Ajijic and Chapala, Mexico, central Mexico. Let me tell you why this is one of the most popular expat destinations in Mexico. It's because, um, well, they have about 20,000 expats in that area, mostly from Canada and the U.S., about a quarter of the population is expats. And you feel it walking around Ahihik. There's a lot of English being spoken and a lot of American looking faces. About, uh, it's, it's only about a 40 minute drive from Guadalajara, which is the second largest city in Mexico. Their international airport is on the south side. Chapala, Lake Chapala is on the south side, or is south. Guadalajara's be, has world-class hospitals, they have events, concerts, museums, there's a ton to do just a short distance away. Ahihik and Chapala are smaller communities, but you do have access to all kinds of things. My mother actually experienced the Ahihik hospital and it was fine, it, it met her needs just fine. Um, it is the largest lake in Mexico, there is some debate about how clean it is. I did see some local kids swimming, but my understanding is it's pretty polluted. I did see people uh, kayaking on it, and I took a boat ride out there. I mean, I don't think it's horrible, but I just probably wouldn't do a daily uh, lap swimming in it. Weather is the huge attraction there. It's just mild year round. 5,000 foot elevation, it's not crazy high, so it's not difficult to acclimate, but really comfortable weather, and it's just near a lot of things. It's four and a half hour drive to Puerto Vallarta, even shorter if you go through Nayarit and just go to the ocean that way, San Blas. Again, Guadalajara is near there. There's a bunch of Pueblos Magicos, some nice kind of touristy towns around. Ajijic and Chapala are really close. They're a little bus drive or a 10 minute drive away. Ahihik is on a sloping hill. My mother did battle with uh, cobbled rocky roads are not the e easiest or stablest for footing. It is on a slope, so you're constantly going up or down, but it is more American concentrated. So you do see a lot more Americans. My, my daughters tell me I, I wear the American uniform, just a bald guy with glasses, a baseball cap, t-shirt and sh shorts with pockets and sneakers with white socks. And you see a lot of that type of person around. The uh, Chapala, you'll see, it feels a little bit more like a Mexican town. It's cheaper, tends to be a bit cheaper for a lot of things, restaurants, renting a place. It's bigger. I mean, it's not huge, but it is larger than Ajijic, so there's more to see or more to walk around. Yeah, the walkways, the malecons are similar. I, I actually like Chapala a little, a little better, but depends on what your likes are. Okay, so your biggest factors when you're looking at living abroad, well, when you're looking at retirement too, is housing and the biggest variables are gonna be, do you buy or do you rent? Are you on your own or do you have one or more other people splitting costs of housing? Vehicle is probably the next biggest expense or not an expense if you don't have a car. If you're just walking using public transportation, they do have a bus system. I was there for a few weeks this summer, and one trip we had a car, the other trip we didn't. Having a car is just nice as a tourist, too, just exploring and going around, hitting some of the stores for bigger purchases, but not having a car was just fine. You know, again, you could take the buses, the local buses, or the inner city, the city to city buses and it works fine as well. 
or simpler local transportation. A lot of bikes connecting Ahihik and Chapala is a nice bikeway. How much you eat out is probably another factor. Eating out's pretty inexpensive, but it's even cheaper if you're cooking some stuff yourself. So here's some basic costs that I came across. Um, my mother got a haircut there for about $5. I saw it, it can be even cheaper just for a guy to get a haircut. Dinner for two, we found some cheaper places. $5 was the cheapest we found for two people. You can spend more, of course you could spend more, but really I didn't see much above $10 for one person drinking a meal and drink just being a non-alcoholic beverage. Of course, you could go up from that if you're spending a lot on, on alcohol, desserts, appetizers, but just main plate and a drink, I guess five to ten dollars, five to twenty dollars for two in that range, depending on what you what you want. If you're going out a lot, of course you're gonna probably well, depending on what your budget is, but you can aim pretty inexpensively, even going out a lot. So th this is your big expenses, your your rental. Now, if you're just staying for a week or two, you're looking at Airbnbs and they can be a hundred dollars a night. Of course, you could find less, you could find more, but if you're renting for long-term, monthly or annual, you know, paying monthly, but on a, a year lease or a six-month lease, you know, you can get under $500 pretty easily. Ahihik's going to be more expensive, you know, add $100 a month uh, to that cost. And so these are long-term arrangements. Now, I did meet some, some expats who were, had different arrangements. There was a couple living in the house of someone else and they had a pretty inexpensive deal. I believe it was under $300 a month. Someone else was doing some house care for someone while they were gone and they were living, I believe it was either under $200 or sometimes even free, uh, depending if the person was gone or there. Um, so there are, you can explore and find different arrangements that would be even more economic, but I think this is a reasonable budget uh, somewhere in the four to eight hundred dollar range. Yeah, movies are cheap. Well, movies are cheap except for if you buy popcorn and soda, then you're you double the price and it could be five bucks. But if you're just getting a movie ticket, it's pretty inexpensive. Yeah, a lot of walking, a lot of the entertainment is just enjoying the nice weather, biking, walking, hiking, uh, the kayak, sitting out. I mean, it's just. There's a lot of weekend activity on the Malecons and in the cities and or in the towns. And it's it's just nice being there. Hourly help service is cheap. So you can get support very inexpensively for cleaning, for yard work, for um, handyman repair work or handy person repair work, for yeah, other type of, of help. Massages, I, I didn't see a lot of options there, but there are some, I, I, it's less expensive than in the US. High speed internet, that's what I was seeing around $30 a month. And the local bus is pretty cheap. I believe it was seven pesos, so around 40 cents. Yeah, so a lot that you can really get by a lot cheaper. If anything, you could generalize is it's going to be a lot cheaper than in the US. Even concerts, going up to Guadalajara, it cost about $20 for a cab going from, from Ajijic or from Chapala to Guadalajara Airport. Guadalajara, uh, about $20. Um, one way we fit the four of us in a cab yeah, and then concerts, other things are, are pretty inexpensive, relatively speaking. Property taxes are very low. We're looking at one to two hundred dollars a year, you know, depending on size of the house. So overall budget, if you're not considering housing and transportation, I mean, I think a single person could have a good quality of life on on a thousand dollars a month. If you do consider housing, we're looking at in the order of 1700 a month. Of course, you can pull back your budget and be more careful and it could be lower 
or if you have a bigger budget, you can, of course, spend more. But we're looking at about 20000 a year for a single person. If you're a couple, you know, then some of your expenses, food will be double, but some like housing, transportation may not be double. So we're looking at around 32000 a year, just a ballpark. And this is if you're renting a place. And most of the people I came across, expats I came across down there were renting. You can buy, there were people buying for sure, but make sure, I mean, I'd recommend you make sure you wanna live there. So check it out, be there for a year. Um, you may get tired of being there. You may find you'd rather be in another country or city um, state or just a different area. So it's, I mean, I, I'd highly recommend renting at least for a while to get used to the area to get, make sure you want to be there. The buying, if you're buying a place, I mean, if you're away from downtown, you're buying in a local neighborhood, you're away from the lake, you know, you can get under 50,000 easy. Um, but if you're trying to buy close to the downtown, close to the lake, you know, you're looking at 100 to 250. I mean, depending on what you're comfortable with, if, if uh, like just apartment type setup is good enough, or if you need a single family standalone home, how much land you need, how much do you need in amenities, but you can spend over 300,000 easy. I mean, you could spend, spend a lot more. But um, you can get a, a comparable, I think the average home prices in the US is around 303 and a quarter, 325,000. Down there, you're looking at considerably less. Again, it's, if you're in an expat type community, if you're in Ahihi, downtown Ahihi, it's going to be more expensive. If you get to some of the outskirting towns, Mexcali or some of the other towns around the lake, or if you're a, a bike ride from downtown, or if you're not right near, you know, a short walk to the lake, then it'll get cheaper. So of course, location, location, you know, where you pick is going to drive the cost. How big, how does it need fix-ups? But definitely it's an option. Again, I Unless you're comfortable, you know where, where you want to be. I wouldn't rush into the buying process. You can easily rent. It's not that expensive to rent. You can get a slice of, of the area and decide what you like. I have a few pictures. I have some videos I could try to clip into, but there's a lot of murals down there. This is all Ahihik right now, their little plaza. I felt very safe in the evenings, didn't feel any problems uh, walking around in the evenings, nice hikes. A lot of this was up to some waterfall in Ahihik. The Ahihik yeah, Malecon. Here's their Malecon, the the boardwalk, sort of the the lakeside. Their market, and they did have some little demonstrations on the weekend. The, lots of nice activities. Again, this is Ahihik, and then I believe this is Chapala now. And we took a little boat ride out to the islands. Again, the water, I mean, I didn't notice it was contaminated or not. So I didn't have any issues with it. But um, just what I heard was, you know, don't go just uh, drinking from it every day. Markets in Chapala. My daughters found a dog shelter that they enjoyed helping out. Hiking up, little hike near Chapala, overlooking the, the city and the lake is quite large. This is Lake Chapala, the Malecon. These little boats, little touristy boats. Here's a little hill you can hike up to in the main, main drag down the downtown. A lot of these big old shady trees. The weather, again, is just real pleasant year round. So it, that's really a nice piece. We do have a free expat guide. Check out expatplanners.com backslash expat ebook. Free guide about living abroad, some of the considerations, the biggest issues, probably taxes, estate planning. Um, we talk about some of those issues in the book. 
I'm with AIO Financial. We are a fee-only financial planning firm. We do not sell products. We do not get any commissions. We're just fee-only, so we're only compensated by our clients. If you need any support, let us know. You can have a, we offer a free upfront meeting. Um, all right, thanks for listening. Take care, bye.